appreciate that your father didn't leave you. Appreciate that he's still there. Appreciate that he's enduring. Appreciate that he's providing for you. He provide for you? He provided for you, you understand? So who should your superhero be in your life? Who's doing that for you? Who should your superhero be in your life? I can't hear you. My mom and dad. Your father and your mother. That's who your superhero should be. We come out here to teach our people just like you, all right? Just like you, that live out here. You live out here? We, we need to give you hope, man, because you ain't got no hope. Who your superhero? You see what I'm saying? You need to have a superhero. You got a father? He live out here? Say it again? You just about to head home, all right? Why your father not your superhero? Why your father not your superhero? It has to be a reason. You know what I want? I want my son to say, yo, my father is my superhero. That's what I want. You understand? He ain't got to say it now. But when I'm dead and gone, he better than say, hey, my father was my superhero. Because he laid down his life for his people. You understand? He followed the example of Christ. That's my superhero. He taught me how to do it. He gave me the roadmap. He was there with me. He instructed me. He corrected me. He did everything I needed for me to be successful and to end up in a better place. You understand? That's how you should look at your father. Now, not everyone's father's keeping God's commandments. Right. All right? That's the problem. These churches are not teaching everyone's father to keep God's commandments. All right? And who suffers for that? The children suffer. The wife suffers. All right? The brothers, the sisters, the cousins. Everybody in the family suffers when you're not keeping God's commandments. That's how that works. All right? Read what you got. Luke chapter 1 verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he had visited and redeemed his people. He redeemed who? His people. He redeemed everybody? His people. Who did Christ come to redeem? His people. Black people. Very good. Come on. And has raised up in horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So ever since this Bible was written. It's always been about Christ coming back to save his people. To save his people. I'm talking blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans scattered across the whole earth. That's who Christ is coming back to save. These are things you must know. All right, you must know these things. What's your nationality according to the Bible? What's your nationality? What nation do you come from? Give me uh, Judah, uh, 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 Jeremiah 14 and 2. All right, what nation do you come from? Say it again. I said I was born here. You was born here. So you think you're American, right? But Amer America is named after a white man named Amerigo Vespucci. That's who this, this, that's who this country is named after. So that's not you. You and your people are named after something else. You're named after a, 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 a great man. You understand? Your people is named after a great man. Your people is named after your forefathers. We're getting ready to read about them. Come on. Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Judah morning. And the gates thereof languish. They are black. What color is Judah? They are black. What color is Judah? They are black. Did you hear that? What color is Judah? So what color is Judah? Black. Come look at this sign right here. All right. It say the Bible say Judah is black. What nation do you come from? What's that say right there? God calls you Judah, but you call yourself what? What's that say? You call yourself what? Black. But you say you come from here. What that mean? You come from America, right? The whole thing say American black. Ain't that what you call yourself? American black? All right, read the scripture again. What is Judah? Judah morning and the gates thereof language. They are black. They are what? Black. So God calls you Judah. You understand? We, we, we look black because we are dark skinned people, right? That's like a nickname. That's a byword that was put upon us a long time ago. A long time ago. You understand? But God calls us Judites. We come from the tribe of Judah, all right? We come from the same tribe as Jesus Christ. You just learned 
all right? That the American blacks come from the tribe of Judah. That's what you just learned. Now look what tribe Christ comes from. Jesus the Christ, all right? Remember what color he is too, come on. Hebrews chapter seven, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Sprang out of where? Judah. Out of where? Judah. What color is Judah? Black. Black. You understand everything about Christ in this Bible is what? Black. These are things that you've never learned before, you've never heard. You thought, you thought it was a white man's book, right? That what you thought? You thought this Bible was for the white man? The white man wrote it? It was for the white man? This, that's, what, that's what you thought? You never, you never picked it up to read it before? Never picked it up to read? I'm going to show you what God says. Give me uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. All right? This is what God says about him and his people. All right? This is who you are today. All right? This is, this is who your father is today. All right? This is who his father is today. And his father, and his father, and his father. As far back as you can go, this is your bloodline. You understand? This is the bloodline that you come from. But we live in this ghetto for a reason. Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people. God said you're a holy people. Come on. Unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. You're a special people. Come on. Unto himself. How special? Above all people. God said that you was below all people. Is that what he said? What did he say? Above all. Above all. Does that mean you're equal to anybody? You and your race, are they equal to anybody? No, not according to the Bible. But you didn't know that was written there. You didn't know that this was your history book right here. You've been going to school learning about George Washington. That ain't got a damn thing to do with you. You understand? That ain't got a damn thing to do with you at all. You understand? Abraham Lincoln ain't got a damn thing to do with you and your people. This is your history book right here. This Bible. Read about David. Read about Moses. Read about Joshua, Ezekiel. Read about Jesus the Christ. Read about Solomon. You understand? Read about these great leaders that you come from. Read about these great leaders who are your forefathers. You understand? Read about those. Get your hope from there. You understand? That's what you need to do. Come on. Above all people. God said that you above all people. These prophets in the Bible was not no regular men. You don't come from a lineage of regular men. All right? These are gods on the earth. That's what we're reading about. All right, and what you see out here is gods that have fallen away from their God. That's what you see. Right. Gods who have rejected their God. So God said, all right, bet, you're going to live in the ghetto. You're going to be on the bottom. All right, I'm going to punish you. You're going to be, you're going to fill the prison houses. I'm going to put you in timeout. You know what timeout looks like for God? You're going to fill the prison houses. 70% of the prison is who? Black people, Hispanic people. You understand? Your people. Why? Because we rejected our God. The same way, if you reject your father, what is he going to do to you? Say it again? If you don't listen to him, he's not going to do nothing to you? <laughs> say it again? Ain't, now it's nothing he can say to you. Because you might be, you might feel like you got some, you know, you push your chest out a little bit. All right, you've been doing some push-ups or something, right? So you feel like you, you, can, you, can, you might be able to handle him, right? That, that might how you feel. That's the only way you would say something like that. You understand? Because when you was a little boy, you wouldn't dare say no shit like that, would, would you? Probably not. Exactly. So what happened? You start doing some push-ups. You start smelling yourself. Little girl start telling you a little something, right? Got your head in the air. Now your, your father will still sit your ass right down. You understand? He will still do that. And he has all authority to because the Most High God has given it to him. All authority until he dies. There's no way you can repay your father back for what he did for you. Right. You understand? There's, no, there's nothing you can do to repay him back. I don't care about what he did after that. Don't matter. I'm talking about him bringing you into this world. There's nothing you can do to say thank you enough for that. You understand? Because now you know what you have? Access to the kingdom. Because your father brought you into this world. You came through his loins. So now you have opportunity to repent and to get your life right. right. And to live forever. How are you going to say thank you for that? How, you gonna, how, how, how can you repay him back for that? You can't. There's nothing you can pay him back for. But you know what you got to do? Keep God's commandments so that you can be a God on this earth. Right. That's what you got to do. It's up to you now. It ain't up to your father no more. It's up to you. Up to you. But when you're a little boy and you ain't listen to him, your father probably beat that ass, didn't he? He probably wore you out, right? He might have made you go stand in the corner. You in time out. You can't go outside today. Matter of fact, you can't go outside all week. Do you know what I'm talking about? All right. That's called punishment. It happened only a few times, okay, but it happened. 
You understand? Why did he do that? Because he hated you? Is that why you think he did that? No! No! He didn't do that because he hated you. He did it why? Because he loved you. He loved you. He wanted you to do better. He wanted you to do better. You understand? The Bible says, oh, Dad, we're going to come right back. Where you at, Deuteronomy? Yeah, we're going to come right back. Give me Sirach chapter 30. All right, I think I want verse 1. All right, I'm going to show you something. My sister, you got children? You got one child, okay. Are you the type of parent that don't believe in beating your kids? You believe in wearing they behind out, right? Yeah. Why? Because that's going to teach them from running in the street when it's a car coming. You understand? That's going to teach you from running in the street when it's a car coming. Read what you got. So Rock chapter 30, verse 1. He that loveth his son causeth him oft to feel the rod. When you love your son, you're going to wear his behind out all the time. All the time. All the time. Why? Because you want to correct him. You understand? You want him to do better than what you did. You understand? You want to tear down the lies that he learned in school. You want to tear down the lies that he learned from his mama. You want to tear down the lies that he learned from his cousin. You want to tear down all the lies that he learned probably inside of this church because they teach the lies in there too. All right? All throughout the earth, there's lies to keep all people deceived and thinking that this white man is Jesus when it's not Jesus at all. We just read that Christ don't look nothing like that. Nothing like that. You understand? He that loveth his son caused him to do what? To fill the rod oft. To cause him often to fill the rod. Come on. That he may have joy of him. That he may what? Have joy of him. So your father wanted joy in you. That's why he wore your behind out. That's why he disciplines you. You understand? That's why he does those things. He may not do it perfectly. You understand? But guess what? There is a God. There is a God. You understand? And when you put your faith in him, he'll deal with you. He'll correct your father. He'll get him in line. He'll fix what he's doing wrong. But you got to honor him like the scriptures say. That's your job. Can't nobody do that but you. You understand? I'm sure a mother would appreciate a son that honors his father. Is that right? Every, uh, every mother's going to appreciate that. You understand? That's going to keep a family tight, safe, together, strong. You understand? To produce strong men. So we can have a strong nation. You understand? But what you see today is not a strong nation. You know how I know that? Because the little boys walk around with their pants on their ass. You understand? With tight ass jeans on. Some of them are feminine. You may not be, but you know what I'm talking about. Right? Dudes be having boyfriends now. That was unheard of. You understand? Unheard of years ago. Now it's a common thing. You know what I'm talking about? It's a common thing. Why? Because father's not there doing what? Causing them off to feel the right. To correct them. You understand? So appreciate that your father didn't leave you. Appreciate that he's still there. Appreciate that he's enduring. Appreciate that he's providing for you. He provide for you? He provided for you. You understand? So who should your superhero be in your life? Who's doing that for you? Who should your superhero be in your life? I can't hear you. My mom and dad. Your father and your mother. That's who your superhero should be. All right? Say it again. You say mostly your mom. All right? That's most of the boys out here. I get it. You understand? Growing up, my mom was my superhero too. But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that that's not a good mindset. All right, that's not a good mindset because the Bible says that the mothers can't raise a son into a man. You, you, you're just smirking, but I'm telling you the truth. She can't. It's not a lie. The Bible's undefeated, bro. It's undefeated. It's un I'll read the scripture if you stick around. I'm gonna show you why I'm saying what I'm saying. It's no offense to you or your people. I understand that. I want you. I don't want you to get in trouble. All right. I don't want you to get in trouble. I don't want that to happen. You understand? So if you gotta go, you gotta go. But I did want to read one more scripture to you. All right. All right. Isaiah chapter three. Drop that. All right. I'm gonna show you why I said what I said. Because most women today, up until a certain age, they can't do nothing with you. You understand? They they haven't been a men themselves. So they how they gonna teach you how to deal with a woman, being a man? They can't. All they know is a woman's perspective. That's it. That's all they know. Do you know a man's perspective? Have you ever been a man? No. You see what I'm saying? She, she can tell you what she might feel like he thinks, but she's not a man. She can't deal with you to bring you up to be a man. You need other men like us, your father, you understand, to teach you how to be a man. You have to be taught that, and it's not going to come from a woman. A woman does have a job. It's to teach you when you're a little boy. But you're not a little boy no more. You understand? So you need men guiding you. Your mother did a good job when you was a little boy. All praises. She could be a superhero up until then. But it comes a point where your superhero has to become a black man. You understand? That can teach you and guide you. 
You understand? To be a man because he's been through it. No offense to your mom. You understand what I'm saying? All right, read what you got. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. He said you want to say something. Go ahead. But look, the only reason why I said that is because I stayed with my mom most of the time since I've been a kid. Okay. So since now, even to then, before I turned 17, I was always with my mom. So it's like I never knew that. Your mother did a great job. And she did a great job. And I, I if I ever need something to talk about stuff like that, I either go to my cousin or my brother. That's that's good. That's good. You understand? I'm not saying that your father and your mother's perfect. And I'm not saying that they're the worst parents ever. What I'm telling you is that you need a father. Right. You need a father. You understand? And that father needs to be your superhero. Your mother cannot be your superhero for the rest of your life. She can't. She, she can do it, she can be it to a certain point. All right, but if, unless you want to stay a little boy for the rest of your life, you have to find a man that can teach you how to be a man. Right. You have to. Unless you, otherwise, you will be a grown man thinking like a little boy. You understand? The Bible's going to tell you. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. In the neighborhoods that you live in, right? In this neighborhood, we'll just use this one as an example, all right? Who's committing the most crime? Say it again. We are, but specifically who? I understand that. Black people are committing the most crime. Yes. Now, who of the black people? Is it men or women? It's men. Very good. All right. Now, let's deal with the men. We agree that the men in this neighborhood is committing the most crime, right? Now, the men that's growing up committing the most crime... Do those men have a father and a mother in the home, or just one or the other? Nine times out of ten, I say it's one or the other. One, nine times, very good, I agree with you. Nine times out of ten, it's one or the other, all right? Now, from one or the other, is it the male that's there with the child, or is it the female, the mama, that's there with the child? Nine times out of ten, which one is it? No, we're talking about not just you, the community. We're talking about your friends, your peers. You understand? The people in your school, you may not even know them, but you know about them. So the crime that's being committed down here, nine times out of ten, are those little boys at home with just a father or those little boys at home with just a mama? I don't talk to people. Nine times out of ten, those little boys that live in the ghetto are at home with just a mama. I'm going to put you on. You agree with that? You agree with that, ma'am? All right, nine times out of ten, they at home with just their mama. Listen to what the Bible says about these little boys that's at home with just one parent is committing most of the crime in your neighborhood. That's what you say, right? And I agree with you. But the Bible said it before any of us was born. The Bible said that. Read what you got. As for my people, children are their oppressors. The Bible said that children would be the oppressors in our community. Who's oppressing the black man today? Children who are who walking around with, with, uh, with uh, uh, drums on their guns. Who walking around with switches on their guns nowadays. You know what I'm talking about? Who is, is, is grown men doing that? Or is little boys making music called drill music about murdering their friends? Is it little children doing that? Or grown men making drill music? Who making the drill music? You say both. But mostly, who is that affecting? It's the children. It's the children. It's the children. You think it's a coincidence that these little boys is walking around here committing murder? No, it's been, they've been bred to do that. It's a problem in our community. And it starts with what we put in our mind. It starts with that. It starts with what we open ourselves up to, what we entertain. A father's going to say, no, nah, you're not hanging out with them. You're going to stay home, get mad. You understand? That's what a father's going to do. A mama can't do that. She's going to say, oh, well, I just want them to have fun. I just want them to be happy. Right. You go ahead and go. You understand? Just be home by this time. Just tell me. Don't lie to me. As long as you don't lie to me, tell me all the evil you've been doing. Just don't lie to me. You understand? And we're going to have a good relationship. Right. And you can do all the evil you want to do. That's what a mama's going to do in my life. She's going to nurture you. A father's going to tell you the truth. A father's going to rear you up to be a man. These little boys out here committing these murders, they don't have fathers rearing them up to be a man. They don't have that. And as a result, you know what you have? 
children oppressing the adults. That's why some of these adults, they scared to go outside after it get dark outside. They scared. They scared because they think it's a little Negro, you understand, that might try to come up off of them. So they scared. You know what? These parents won't let their children, their little children, play outside after a certain time. And they lock their doors at night because one of these little might come up and try to come up off after them. You understand? That's why that happens. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. We're talking about women and how they need a man to help them raise their children. That's what we're talking about. Read on. And women rule over them. And who rules over them? Women. Because they're growing up in a single parent home with just a woman trying to raise a man. A woman can't raise no man. A woman can raise a little boy and she can raise a man into a boy that still think like a man. You understand? But she can't raise no man. You understand? You need a man to do that. Whether it be your father or, or, or one of these other leaders in the community. You understand? But can't no woman teach you how to be a man. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna work. Alright? Come on. Oh my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err. What did a woman do? Cause thee to err. Did you hear what the Bible said? The woman will cause you to err if you continue to listen to her as an adult. No grown man should be taking counsel from a woman. Right. Not no grown man, I'm going to say it again, not no grown man should be taking counsel from a woman. That's out of order. Way out of order. You understand? A woman has a job. I'm going to show you what it is. Titus chapter 2. A woman has a job. I know you got to get home. I don't want you to get in trouble. You understand? If you can stay, all praises. But I don't want you to get in trouble. We're going to be doing this for a while, all right? Titus chapter 2, I'm going to show you the woman's job. Because a lot of women don't know the job that they have. You understand? I'm going to show you. She got a job. She can teach. Read what you got. Titus chapter 2, verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. Come on. That they may teach the young women. Teach who? The young women. Teach who? The young women. Come on. To be sober. So we need women who's able to teach the young women. Right? Yeah. To be sober. To have, a, to, to, to have a clear mind. And you know what else? Come on. To love their husbands. And to love their husbands. Love their husbands. We need women to teach young men young little daughters, what love looks like. We need women to do that. Guess what? By myself, I can't teach my, 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 my son how, to, how, how, how love looks between a, a man and a woman. I can't do that. I need a wife that's willing to submit to this Bible. And I got to be willing to submit to this Bible myself. And we got to do that together and have children and then teach them what love looks like. That's the only way that works. And as you do that, you know what you do? You teach the younger. Look, this is how you treat a man. This is how you cook. This is how you clean. All right, this is how you make him feel good. This is when you say this. This is you definitely don't say this during this time. We need women that that know how to do that. All right, make the burden a little light on some of these men. Let's get married. You understand? Because the man today got to be the woman's father and the husband, all at the same time. She grew up with no daddy. She ain't got no damn daddy. You understand? So now you got to come in and be daddy before you can be a husband. You understand? That's way out of order. It's not supposed to work like that. All right? So we are changing the minds of our people because these churches are not doing that. They're not teaching that. They're not teaching the Bible according to how it's supposed to be taught. Precept upon precept. They don't do that inside these churches. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Family.